Bollard to Azimuth. Come in, Azimuth. Yep. You hesitated. What? You aren't moving anymore. Why? Don't you ever just need to take a break? Listen to how the waves sound when they hit the rocks. Or the sand, or this boat. It's the same, but it's different too. It's kind of nice. I feel like I've done it before, but I can't remember. Isn't that weird? Not really. There's lots of things I don't remember. I couldn't tell you what I had for breakfast two days ago. It's different from that, I think. It's like there's a whole chunk of time missing from We aren't my... paying you to wax philosophical about the meaning of memory. Get in that ship. <sighs> aye, aye, Captain. And it's a submarine, not a ship. It's a big thing that moves people through water. I don't see why you couldn't get Frank to do this. He never shuts up about submarines. We have other plans for him. And you should only use designated code names over these lines. They might not be secure. If they aren't secure, why are we talking on them? Company policy. You don't want to know what happens when you go against their rules. No, I guess I don't. Find anything useful yet? Some manifest. But you already knew who was on this thing when it disappeared, right? Anyone can find it if they care to look. The Morpheus has been missing for over 100 years. You don't need to remind me. Frank, uh, Calypso won't stop telling us that story over dinner. We've had to start drawing straws to figure out who will have to endure yet another round of the exploits of Captain Charles Rowland and his doomed voyages across the Atlantic. How terrible. I hope you never have to know that kind of thing. Me too. You're sure Roland's notebook is in here? That's what our sources say. So he kept two different journals? It's not out of the question. If he abandoned this when he abandoned ship, he'd have to start fresh when he gained command of the Artemis. I don't know why they gave him a new ship when he lost his last one. You know why. Because he's a white dude with lots of money? Yep, that's definitely it. Huh. This looks like a map to a system of underwater caves. I, I wonder where it all... not there for maps. We need his journal to understand what kind of deal he made with the creatures. I don't care about Roland's extracurricular spelunking activities. Okay, okay, I'm looking for the diary. I just... can't help it if I'm a little curious. This is my first job in a while that doesn't involve me killing something. Ah, uh, yes. Tell me, how does the other half live? You know I can't talk about it. Oh, come on. We're friends, right? You and I have a very different idea of friendship. Can't blame a girl for trying, especially when you're on the wrong side of the fight. We don't take sides for a reason. Can't make much money if we limit our contract options. But and that's why both of you are having trouble recruiting people to your causes. You're just so absolute with everything. You either want to save the creatures or kill them. There isn't an alternative. You sure? You could just let them, you know, live their lives, not interfere with them at all. Big talk from someone who spent a majority of the past few months killing them. A job's a job. I still have to eat at the end of the day. And they don't? I didn't say that. You don't like killing them? Of course not. Some of them, the other hunt clubbers, they do. It's troubling. It's, it's, it's a game to them. It's a competition. But for you? Everyone's got to find their own way to survive. I don't like it, but the hunt club is all I have. You sure about that? I... yes. N no, I don't know. It's like... It's like I was someone else before. Bef before... Before what? I don't know! There are times when I'll think... And I remember... The sound of metal crashing in on itself. The way it warps. The screams. But then it goes away like it never was there to begin with. Like I made the whole thing up. But I didn't. I think I didn't. Did you find the journal? I... Yes. Yes, I found the journal. Good. Bring it to the rendezvous point. I'll meet you there. You're not sending the Devilman twins? No. This is too important to screw up. Huh. 
You really want to know what that old guy did to make a deal with those monsters. My supervisor has a reason for everything. If she thinks it's important, then so do I. You ever wonder if you're fighting for the right side? I don't have to wonder. I know. Thank you so much for listening to The Bridge. This mini episode was written, edited, and mixed by Alex Brown. We are very excited to introduce Christian Busey, who is the voice of Azimuth. This mini episode also features Jen Elysian as the voice of Bollard. We'd like to thank the coolest maestro in town, Jake Hall, for his awesome 1930s sound, and someone who's never been on a semi-haunted submarine, Sarah Fairchild, for providing the amazing music that accompanied this episode. Do you remember the metal warping in on itself? Or the screams? Well, I hope not, but maybe you can help Azimuth figure out what's going on by heading to thebridgepod.com where you can find transcripts, character bios, and links to our store, social media, and Patreon. Or you can send us an email at watchtower10reports at gmail.com. That's watchtower10reports. And as always, please rate and review us on iTunes or the podcasting app of your choosing. We have a couple of special announcements today. First, we'd like to give a belated birthday shout out to our Patreon patron, Abby. Thanks for the support, Abby. We hope you had an excellent birthday and that you didn't find yourself uh, lost in the middle of the Atlantic. We'd also like to congratulate our very own Jen Elysian on the release of her newest book, Over Raging Tides. If you love lady pirates, creepy monsters, and omniscient maps, then we think you'll take a quick liking to Jen's book. To celebrate her new release, we're giving away a couple of copies of Over Raging Tides. Visit our Facebook page or Twitter to learn more. Thank you once again for listening to The Bridge. Today's outtakes are uh, kind of a mix of things. We have one from Jen, and then there are a couple with Christian, uh, Bridget, who is Christian's partner, and my wonderful friend and colleague, and me. We were all kind of recording in the same space, and shenanigans ensued, so we hope you enjoy. So... How do you want the first line, exacerbatedly, yup? You know why. I just had to do one like that. Have you ever watched What Happens in Vegas? It's like I was someone else before. B- before. Before what? <laughs> <laughs> was that me? No, I'm on silent. <laughs> Mine is, my, I, I never turn my volume, I, my sound on, but I did it for, listen to music earlier. <laughs> Don't we get to be happy? I'm still recording this, by the way. It's probably going to go in the, <laughs> in the outtakes. Uh, right. Okay, cool. <laughs> Let's do... Fangirling so hard over here. Oh my gosh, look at the process. It's so great. It's so glamorous. Code names only on this line. Only code names. No real names. Azimuth. Azimuth. Have, have you not you been... been... <laughs> We've said it like 50 times. <laughs> you just can't find good covert operatives to listen so to the line. true. What is this? Good help is so hard to find. Especially in the middle of the Atlantic. <laughs> I don't have to wonder. I know. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun.